Patricia Kubo knew at an early age she wanted to be a teacher. When she was about eight years old, she enlisted her younger sister as her pupil as well as her school supply collector. When the school across the street from their home discarded old supplies, Patty and her sister recycled them. At the end of the year, they would throw out all their, you know, crayons and flashcards and workbooks and things like that. So I would plop my sister over into the industrial bin, into the um, <laughs> depths of the things below, and she would gather up the leftover flashcards and things like that, and she said, here, Patty, here's another one. Fast forward a few decades and Patty's students at Bowling Green State University are benefiting from that clear sense of calling she had so many years before. She's expanded her scope from flashcards and worksheets to studying the people of the world and their educational systems through comparative international education. And what comparative ed is, is looking at edu education here in the U.S. and abroad and seeing how we can work to improve our own system. Um, but also learn about values, culture, belief systems of other places and how politics and economics and um, culture intersect to make the type of society and citizens that we have. Her interest in cultural issues began early in life when she moved from the suburbs to inner city Minneapolis in 1975. She quickly became a part of a diversity project. I was actually a part, one of the first people to go through the whole interracial um, uh, gatherings and busing system of getting people from different areas of inner city together. So I grew up with, you know, a number of African-American students, white students, uh, Filipino, etc. And I feel bad having the experience when I was young of working with people from different, you know, cultural groups really shaped who I am. From Minneapolis, Patty moved in 1977 to the rural town of Rush City. It was there Patty realized she wanted to pursue an English teaching degree. If she could continue playing basketball in college, that would be a bonus. After talking to Cobber basketball coach Dwayne Severson after one of her high school games, Concordia seemed like a good fit. I really was going to choose a school that wasn't just for sports. I wanted sports, but I wanted a really good academic place, a uh, place known for being very good with pre-service teacher instruction and I wanted to have a spiritual background. So I knew I wanted to have a private um, and definitely with a Christian frame of mind. So uh, when I looked at the literature from all these schools, met and talked with people, I really felt that Concordia was the right choice for me. Patty went into English education, student taught at Moorhead High School and played basketball for the Cobbers. It was on a Basketball May seminar she learned about her love of international travel and culture. Her team went to nine European countries and played basketball in about half of them. The focus of it was sport and culture, so we had a chance to visit um, previous Olympic sites, Olympic villages. Um, we interacted with people at universities and certainly with the locals. So that is what really started the international bug in me. Playing overseas was exciting, but nothing could top playing on their home court. Patty was part of the 1988 women's basketball dream team at Concordia. The college got the bid to host the Final Four, and the Covers landed in the championship game, which they won. I remember a lot of lessons that we learned through our practices and through, um, you know, Coach Severson about defense wins championships, that all of you are good, but we'll be nothing unless we are something together and just the importance of gelling as a team. After graduating from Concordia, Patty went on to teach high school English in Wausau, Wisconsin. She enjoyed the experience, but wanted to combine her love of international culture with education. She found the answer in a master's program in international development education at the University of Minnesota. While there, a PhD program was created, and Patty was one of the first two graduates of the Comparative and International Development Education Program. When she completed her doctorate, another window opened. Bowling Green University had a teaching and research position open in Patty's field. It was the only position in the nation at the time. She was hired in 1998 and has been there ever since. Since arriving at Bowling Green, Patty has written a textbook in comparative and international education and has produced 60 publications. Patty worked with Russian, Hungarian, and Ukrainian scholars and educators. She helped create a democratic institute that led to recognition from President George W. Bush in 2002 and to an Outstanding Citizenship Award from the U.S. Agency for International Development. 
That year, she realized something else was calling her, Sub-Saharan Africa. With funding from a federal grant, she started her work in South Africa. I've been to South Africa six times. I was a visiting professor at the University of Western Cape um, in South Africa and lived in, in um, right outside Cape Town for five months um, in 2006. Uh, collected a lot of research data, interviewed 243 people, teachers, students, principals, community members, a former freedom fighter who was in uh, prison with Nelson Mandela at the time on Robben Islands. Though Africa will always be part of her research, she is now also turning her focus to the Middle East. She's taken students and local teachers to Jordan and even took a basic Arabic course at the University of Jordan. That's been exciting and it's enriching for me and it reminds me of what it's like to be in a new area, just like when I'm introducing my students to comparative international education. Um, it's a really humble stance because you can't know the whole world, but as you keep doing work in this area, you learn a little more about yourself. So you look outward to be able to look back in and see more about your, yourself, who you are, um, what your motivations and values and interests are, as well as learning from other people in the process.